guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video, I wanted to talk about a topic that comes up frequently. And to be honest, I've never addressed this because to me, it seems like common sense. However, the more I am asked about this, the more it has led me to believe that I probably do need to cover this topic. So what am I on about? Waist trainers, people, waist trainers. They've become increasingly popular, I guess, in the celebrity space. They've become even more popular now in the fitness industry. And I guess the claims that these waist trainers make, um, I guess, leave us with promises of having a narrower waist and that they can somehow reshape your or contour your body and leave you with an overall narrower, more desirable hourglass shape. So in today's video, I want to talk to you about what's the effectiveness of waist trainers on our body fat percentage and what are the acute or short-term and long-term risks, potential risks that are associated with wearing a waist trainer. So how does the waist trainer fare on reducing our overall body fat percentage? Well, I'm really sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but unfortunately, it has no bearing on our body fat percentage. So what it will do is while you're wearing the garment, it's absolutely going to heat up our core, specifically in the area it's being worn. And this is much the same as wearing a compression garment or some kind of tightly fitted clothes. But unfortunately, for the short duration that you're wearing your waist trainer during your workout, or even if it's just a small amount of time after or throughout the day, the increase in temperature that we experience is unlikely going to contribute to a meaningful amount of energy expenditure due to thermogenesis. So this is the same argument we face when we talk about exercising at high temperatures or sitting in a sauna. It's very normal for us to actually see an increase in the amount that we sweat when we sit in a sauna or we exercise at a higher temperature. But the reality is the weight decrease that we see and that's associated with a sitting in a sauna or exercising in the heat is a result of an increase in water losses. It's not actually a reflection of a decrease in our body fat percentage, which is what we're actually wanting when it comes to body composition and improving our overall physique. So what is contributing to this appearance of a narrowing waistline is time spent in a calorie deficit. So a lot of these bikini and fitness models will attribute their competition success and their level of leanness to the fact that, well, I wore this waist trainer and it helped me achieve this tiny waist. But the reality is it's a lot of hard work, a lot of consistency in the gym training and continually eating in a calorie deficit. It's all about energy balance. If you expend more than you consume, you will lose weight. It is as simple as that. If we do this for a significant amount of time, which is often the case for a lot of these competitors, what we're actually seeing is a result of prolonged deficits, a lot of training, a lot of resistance training specifically to help them retain their muscle. And the appearance of that narrow waist isn't the fact that they're wearing a waist trainer, but rather the overall reduction in body fat. And of course, as we lose body fat, of course you're going to start to see those visible abs and an overall smaller waist. So what is that waist trainer actually doing? Well, let's have a look at the acute and the long-term changes that it might be having on our physical bodies. So in the short term, you very well may see a slightly narrower waistline, uh, but that really depends on how long you've actually had it on. And for most of us, certainly for the athletes and competitors that I see wearing them, it's rather transient. They're putting it on before they go to the gym, they're doing their training, they might leave it on for a little while after their session, but at some point you're gonna come home, you're gonna have a shower, you take it off, and then what happens next? Unfortunately, once it comes off, your body is going to return to its original shape, to your anatomy, your body's structure. It's not a permanent change. If we look at some of the long-term effects, and some of these studies actually come from very old research that looks at corsets being worn back in the early 1800s, and this actually can show quite a number of negative health outcomes. So the first thing is wearing it consistently is actually going to reduce your overall core strength, and that could lead to long-term back pain and develop poor posture. So while you're wearing the waist trainer, you're also putting an abnormal amount of pressure on your lungs and an abnormal amount of pressure on your intestines and surrounding organs. And that can actually reduce your overall lung capacity. 
So if you ask me, for somebody that is wanting to maximize their performance and output during a resistance training session because they wanna make sure they retain their muscle while they're prepping, and that's inevitable when you go through a fat loss phase, you are going to lose some amount of muscle. So if your performance was important to you, then wearing a waist trainer that restricts your movement, it restricts your lung capacity and potential performance seems somewhat counterproductive. Now I'm sure for some of you, it may not actually impact you all that much. It might not restrict your breathing. It might not be uncomfortable while you're working out. But if that's the case, at best, it's not having any effect since the purpose of the trainer is to be tight enough to restrict your breathing to manipulate your internal organs and bring you in closer. So you'd be wasting money. <laughs> These things are not cheap. They range anywhere from say 20 to $120 per garment. I would much rather invest my money in something that actually is going to have a positive effect on performance. And that might be investing in your mental health. It might be investing in a science or evidence-based coach. It might be practically implementing proper nutrition protocols, effective sleep. There are so many things that I would much rather spend my hard earned money on than a waist trainer. So to wrap up this video, it is not going to have any meaningful impact on A, reducing your body fat percentage. It's definitely not going to target your core body fat if that's what you're looking for. And it's not going to have any long-term uh, physical changes to your body shape. So throw away that waist trainer. It's not going to be helping you. To me, it's just really uncomfortable. And I would rather go in and actually have a really good training session, work hard, follow the scientific principles of nutrition and training. And that's how you're going to get long lasting, effective results. So thanks so much for watching guys. I hope that you have found this video to be valuable. Have a happy new year and we'll see you next time.